Welcome to So and So, brought to you by Bernina, made to create. I'm Meg Goodman, and you're about to enjoy a special edition of this podcast as we are at the 2022 AQS National Quilt Week. This is a casual conversation with a special member of the quilting community. A conversation about how he got started, what inspires him, what excites him, and his connection to this community. Our guest today is Bill Schrader III, the very recent new owner of the American Quilt Society. His grandparents, Bill and Meredith Schrader, started the business, which has seen the whole family, ranging from parents, aunts, uncles, brothers, sisters, and cousins, working in the business at some point. The Schraders launched the AQS Quilt Contest, becoming the first contest in the industry to award a $10,000 cash prize. AQS has awarded $6.3 million in prize money to date, and it became the largest quilting membership organization in the world. AQS began in 1984, when Bill and Meredith Schrader and their daughter Lynn Lloyd formed it to promote quilting artistry. AQS started hosting Quilt Week shows in Paducah 36 years ago, creating more than $500 million in economic impact. Bill, thank you for joining us on So-and-So today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Um, you grew up in a family whose enterprise was internationally known. This this is what you all did with with AQS, and we're, we're going to get into all the rest of it. Um, but let's start out. Tell us about your family and how this all started and how you got to where we are today. Yeah, so it was pretty crazy. Uh, my grandfather actually and grandmother went to a quilt show in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. I think it was 83 and granddad was just astonished at all the the quilts and the people that were there and that was just a little show back then you know and um they didn't have they had a pr- top prize but it wasn't much for for best of show in, in that show and so he basically came back and said hey we're going to start a quilting company and we're going to give some big money for first prize I, I don't know exactly how much it was but i think it was 10 grand the first year that they did it mm-hmm. and that was in 80 84 so, um, it's a good size prize. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Back then it was, it was something that was unheard of that nobody was doing that then. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, obviously he got the best quilts and all that, and it's kind of all snowballed from there. So what was it like being a kid growing up <laughs> around this? I mean, I'm sure you had a job. Yeah, for yeah. sure. So, so I kind of joke with people when they're like, Hey, when, you know, when did you, what was your first experience with the quilt show? And, um, for me, I we used to sell buttons in our AQS booth back in the day. So when I was like mm-hmm. three, four years old, I would be in the booth in Paducah trying, you know, thinking I was selling buttons. And I'm sure they were probably just trying to keep me out of the way. But um, I can remember coming to all the Paducah shows, helping dad hang signs and do all that stuff as early as, you know, four or five years old. So mm-hmm. I've been in it a long time. So You recently purchased all of this. Yep. Um, what in, inspired you to, to do that? Tell us the, the story about that. Um, the family, you know, my dad worked in it. My aunt worked in it. My grandmother was still in it every single day. My, my other uncle, um, he worked in the warehouse and shipping and everything. So they were all co-owners at the time. And uh, basically they, they had decided that they were going to sell the company. And it was getting pretty down to the wire where it was fixing to go final and some stuff happened. And um, basically, I just came to the family with my brother-in-law, James, who is actually, a, we're, we're partners in AQS together. He doesn't really get in the limelight, but we are 50-50 partners in it. Um, but he was, he, I came to him and I was like, hey, man, you know, they're th- talking about selling it. Do you you want to go into it with me? And he was like, yeah, let's let's do it. So we basically said, hey, if we match what this other company is is wanting to do, will you sell it to me? And, and they kind of talked and it, it all just kind of fell into place where they were like, yeah, cause there was a lot of talk. I don't know what the other company would have done, but there was discussions that Paducah quilt show would no longer be going. Mm. Um, I don't know what, like I said, I, I don't know all the details cause I wasn't in the day to day, but from conversations that I had with Meredith and Billy, it was a, hey, you know, they're, they're not going to have Paducah quilt show anymore. And that's when I really sat down and, and thought really hard, Hey, you know, what, what would granddad want? And I don't want to get emotional on this podcast, but me and my grandfather were best friends. Like, I mean, we hunted together, we fished together. I grew up with him beside me and everything that I did. And so, um, this is what he would have wanted. Um, whenever 
I told him I was actually stepping away from the company and starting my own company. He, I've, I maybe have seen that man cry twice. And that was one of the times that I, that he had cried. And, and I know, I mean, at the time I was young and, and didn't understand the impact of it. Um, he passed in 2017. So I just wanted to do something that I knew would make him proud. And, and I know he was huge Paducah, you know, for the city and what this show does for this city. It, it's, you can't replace it. I mean, it, it, People can talk about bringing, you know, Paducah's talking about bringing these sports facilities in and all this stuff. And, yeah, that's that's all well and great. Everybody loves sports, but you, you can't duplicate what Paducah does. So so I wanted that. I wanted that responsibility because I know that's what he would want. Your, your family not only runs AQS and Quilt Week, but you have American Quilter Magazine, mm-hmm. and you founded the uh, National Quilt Museum. Tell us about that. Now, that's a separate entity now. Yeah, so that's totally separate. And again, I was out of it when all that went down, so I don't really know the ins and outs of it. I just know, you know, granddad and grandma, I think it was 91, started the Quilt Museum, and then later on it got named the National Quilt Museum. Mm-hmm. And it's just another draw for Paducah. I mean, it, it, again, everything granddad and grandma did was to promote Paducah. They wanted it to be, you know, bigger than it was. They wanted to have a draw here. And so that's what that was. Uh, AQ Magazine, we have a fantastic editor. I don't know if you've had a chance to talk with Ann, um, but Ann Hamill is the editor of that. And and we have around, I don't know, we're fluctuating somewhere between fifty five and 60,000 members these days. That magazine is a member benefit. So that that's what you get for our, for our membership. And and so that's, that's a pretty cool thing too. So, so we are at Quilt Week talking now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Last year, you weren't in person. The year before, you weren't in person. Um, what does it mean to you to be here today? <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a loaded question because, uh-huh. I mean, I've spent, again, from, from day one, we closed on April 1st, 2021, and all of my energy, obviously, yes, we do Daytona, we do Branson, those two shows we've already had, and, and they've come and gone, but 90% of my energy was spent on getting Paducah to be the biggest show that it can be. I mean, everybody knows the, the economic impact for Paducah, but for the quilting industry, it's something that we needed. Um, everybody knows what Paducah is. I, I refer to it as a Super Bowl. Obviously, people know about Houston. That's a great, great show. But for me, you know, Paducah is home. Mm-hmm. And, and I just tried to do my best to get everybody back here. What's your vision for future shows? <laughs> <laughs> so you're the guy now, yeah, so yeah. you have to have the vision. Yeah, I understand completely. So, so you know, right now we're we're doing five shows. I want to get to six. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what that other location looks like. We've done as many as eight, and I, I've told my show team, look, I don't I don't want to go back to eight. It just it's it runs me ragged. Mm-hmm. Um, so six is a good number. You get three in the spring, three in the fall. And, and I feel like that's where I want to sit. But, um, uh, again, Paducah will always be my main focus. So, so tell us about AQS. It's, it's big. Um, what's, <laughs> what's its purpose and, and how, what do you do to serve the quilting community? Yeah. So we, we, the best thing that we try to do is keep the quilters out in front. I mean, the, the quilts are absolutely amazing. You've seen them this week. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they need to be the focal point because what these women do are, are just, it's uh, it, stunning. It's, yeah, you, you mm-hmm. can't really put it into words until you see it. Um, so that's my main focus is to continue to put the quilt and the quilters first. Um, you know, but on top of that, we try to bring the best content for quilters that we can. We try to inspire people through quilting. A lot of people do this and, and we just try to, you know, do the best that we can to, to inspire more people to, continue to quilt. Now your goal for AQS is to reach 70,000 members by 2024 and 100,000 <laughs> by 2020. That's ambitious by <laughs> yeah. 2027. Yeah. So d- d- do you have some some plans to do yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, so we're we're obviously now that I've gotten through my first Paducah, like I said, that first year it was all about this and this is pretty much all the sleepless nights that I've had has been trying to figure out how to get people back to Paducah and make this show the best that it can be. Um, so now, now moving forward, I'll go to work on, Hey, what can we do collectively to get more people to join? What does the benefit look like? How can we team up with partners within the industry so that a quilter looks at that benefit and says, okay, this is a no brainer. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, that right now they get 20% off at our website. We have 10% off at connecting threads and we have 
these other little things that we give to the quilter. They get free fab or free thread from Wonderfill, um, things like that. But it's it's got to be a collective a- effort from not only AQS but other people that we partner with in the industry. And we have great sponsors. I mean, I can talk about that a little bit later. But um, all of our sponsors getting in touch with all of them to say, look, what where are we going and how do we get this where people if you quilt you say, I've got to be a member of AQS. So it's it's not if, it's how quickly can I join? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right, yeah. So um, talk about your sponsors. Yeah, so obviously, you know, in Paducah, we have just a fantastic lineup of sponsors. Uh, they, I call them sponsors, but they're more, uh, I would say more like partners. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and you can go on our website and look at them because I know I'll forget one. But, you know, the the big time sponsors that we have really support AQS and, and they're like, hey, whenever I have a problem and I call them and I say, hey, I've got this problem. Can you help me? They're all like, yeah, what do we need to do? Mm-hmm. And so that's that's really a, a help to me because, I mean, you know, they the, the quilters support them. And so we try our best to communicate with them on what we need. So. Um, and speaking of, of people who help you out, the whole town of Paducah <laughs> comes around this. I mean, yeah. you can't go anywhere in this town. And, um, you know, it takes a special relationship uh, getting everything together. Talk, talk about that. Yeah. So it's kind of funny that you, you talk about that. So three days after I, uh, I kind of talked to you a little bit about the craziness with my son and we can get into that to later or not. But anyway, three days after we closed on the deal. I actually met with the mayor of Paducah and the, and the county judge, his name's Judge Clymer, um, to try to talk to them about what we need to do. And then three days after that, I talked to the secretary of state in Kentucky, who's over tourism and all that. So mm-hmm. I was a busy guy trying to get all those pieces lined up to say, Hey, what are we, what are we doing here? And how can you guys work with us to make this the best show possible? They, they get it. I mean, they, they 100% understand what this, what this does for our community and what it does for the quilting industry. Mm-hmm. And, um, so they were, they were a big help. And like you said, the, the towns downtown, they all put welcome quilter signs up. They all welcome them into the community and our news people, they show up, they do stories about quilt week all week long, our radio stations, our newspapers, they all jump on board to say, okay, what do you guys need to make this thing as, as easy as possible? So it's, it's really a great thing for me. So. We have uh, interviewed uh, members of your staff, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, and they've talked about you. <laughs> and and now that you know, again, you're you're the guy. They said that one of the things that they really appreciate about what you do is is you give them freedom to to try new things. Yep. Uh, and somebody will come up with an idea, and you're like, "Yep, let's <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's let's go with that." Um, you know, when you took this over, you'd run other companies, but nothing like this. Yeah. So, so tell us about your your leadership style and the team that supports you with this. Yeah. So, so first off, with with my team, um, most of them stayed with me. Um, again. I rolled the dice, but they rolled the dice with me. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's not just me that's in this. Um, you know, Bonnie Browning has been with us since I think '91 or so. Terry Gwill, our he's now our COO, but he actually started in the warehouse in 1980. I think it was 80. It was either 84 or 74. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It's been oh, a wow. long time. He started in the the warehouse with us, and he has worked basically every position in that company, and now he's our COO. Mm-hmm. And me and Terry have conversations every day. Hey, what do, what do we need to do and all this? And then um, I had some 10-year employees. I had some 20-year employees. I came to them all. I was like, hey, this is what we're trying to do. Will you stick with me? And they pretty much all stayed with me and said, let's do it. And mm-hmm. so um, I'm, very, I'm very thankful for that. And um, that speaks a lot of volumes of, of my grandfather and grandmother, though, on how they led. Because they knew, my, my employees knew kind of, you know, yes, it's it's another Schrader, but they didn't have a clue how I led or or how I expected things done. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, they've been around me a little bit, but when, you, when you're when you making the calls, it's totally different. Mm-hmm. I mean, used to, I could say, hey, Dad, what do you think about this? And, and he'd run it by me and whatever, we'd talk about it. But now it's like, hey, you're on your own. I mean, it's your company. Obviously, I still call him and say, hey, what what's your input? And he'll give it to me, but... It's, it's just not the same whenever you make the call. And, and it's kind of funny. We were laughing about it because this week, we, you know, 
my my dad and my grandmother and my aunt work at missions with me. That's what we do for for Wednesday through Saturday of the show. And used to people would come up and say, "Hey, what if they have a problem?" and and I would just point to dad. And so this <laughs> week they all just point right at me and they're uh-huh. like, "This is kind of nice that we don't have to deal with the problems." So Sure. Um but again, my my staff is great. Sorry, I kind of got off a little bit different there, but but my staff is is what makes this week run so smooth because we put so many hours and effort into getting this thing started that when the show shows up, it's like, okay, let's just deal with the little bit of problems that we have come up and try to make this show the best experience for the attendee. It's it's interesting because um, sometimes second and third generations will take over a family business and not understand what the first generation went through to build yeah. it. Uh, so they don't have the appreciation and it seems to fall by the wayside. But it it seems like the, the Schrader family values have permeated every generation and people are, are following you. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it's kind of like I told you before. I mean, we, we have a, a very strong family connection. Mm-hmm. Um, not, I mean, all my cousins live here except for maybe two. And I see, I see them even, they live in Lexington. So, I mean, there's, there's like eight or nine grandkids and seven. Now there's seven or eight great grandkids and we all know each other. We all talk to each other. Hey, it's happy birthday. We all keep in touch. We all see each other. Christmases, we're all together. You know, Thanksgiving, we're all together. Um, so it's, it's just a great dynamic to say, Hey, we're all in this together. And it's funny, my sisters and my aunts and uncles and everybody this week text me. I was like, Hey, <laughs> we're cheering you on this uh-huh. week. So that, that means a lot to me. So it does. Speaking of family, you mentioned your son Brooks yep. before yep. and you said, well, we can talk about him later. So <laughs> we, we need to talk about him a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so his name is William Brooks. Mm-hmm. So we call him Brooks, but he is he is He's William. The fourth. And I swore that I would not name my child William when I was a younger kid. Mm-hmm. And uh, because er- so so my grandfather was Bill, my dad is Billy, and I'm Bill. But it was so confusing because everybody would say Bill, and we'd all three look. Uh-huh. And so I was like, I'm not going to put my child through that. I'm not going to do it. Well, then when when me and my wife got pregnant. They were like, what's the name? And I was like, it's William. So, I mean. You didn't even think no, about it. You no, just, uh, that's it. No, uh-huh. it was, it was going to be, and, and you know, we, we had, you know, obviously if it would have been a girl, we discussed Meredith, obviously. Sure. So, but it, it happened to be a boy. So crazy story on that is uh, we closed March 31st at like four o'clock in the afternoon on the business. Everything goes on. I'm in a meeting at like seven 30 with my with my new team and everything. And I'm going over what I expect and how we're going to do this and pull all this off. And, and my phone buzzes and I look at it and it's my wife and she's like, Hey, my water just broke. So it's like eight o'clock in the morning, not even 12 hours after we close. So I tell everybody, I'm like, Hey, I got to go. My, my wife's in labor and he was born about 10 30. And so, yeah, it's pretty crazy, but, but Brooks is great. I mean, that, that child is, it's just like anything else. He's part of the family and, and he's, being raised again, Meredith comes by. We eat with her about once a week, once a week or so, and she'll come by and see him. And same thing with my mom and dad. And it's really full, cool to watch them with him. That dynamic. So, so in a couple of years, we'll see him handing out the buttons. Oh yeah, here he'll, at the show. Yeah, uh-huh. he'll, he'll for sure be doing something. I don't know what it is, but we got to try to keep him out of trouble. But he'll he'll be down here soon. He was here yesterday, so it's kind of fun to watch him walk around and look at the quilts and all that kind of stuff. So. So, Bill, what excites you about the future and um, your hopes for the quilting community? So the thing that's exciting is I'm continuing a legacy that they built, and that is such a huge pillar in the quilting community. I mean, anytime you talk to a quilter, it's, hey, have you been to Paducah? No, but I'd love to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh, I love Paducah. I want to get back. So owning this company, it just means, hey, Paducah is going to be there on that date in April and the quilters are coming and you know, I'm not going to sit here and lie and say, I knew they were coming back. I mean, I, it was, it was a lot of days of, I mean, even, you know, we started getting pre-registers in and we sold out 28 classes, uh, the first six hours that classes were open. Wow. That's a record, right? Mm -hmm. I think it was. And, you know, even then I was still like, yeah, but you know, there's a whole lot of seats and what if only half of them show up? And, and to be honest, until we opened the doors at nine o'clock on Wednesday, I still didn't know. 
But when we opened those doors, mm-hmm. I was like, it's back. Uh-huh. So, oh, it, so was. it was, yeah, it was, it was really cool to be a part of it and, you know, see that Paducah is still here and, and the quilters want to be here and it still had the same buzz. I mean, you were here Wednesday morning, the electricity the was fantastic. Sure. Yeah. Yep. So, so it was just really cool to see all that come, you know, all the hard work that I put in to, and again, I don't want to take anything away from my team because I do have a whole lot of employees that really helped me out that I could not, could not do this without. But for me, I spent lots of days in that office trying to get all that and in the community too, talking to the mayor and the judge and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So to see it all come to life and it be as successful as it has been this week, it's really, it's really something that means a lot to me. What's your dream for this? I just want to continue it. Mm -hmm. I mean that, I mean, it sounds cliche, but, but that's what it is. I mean, I want people to continue every time that they say, Hey, the quilters are coming to Paducah. There's 30,000 people coming. I mean, that's, that's what it is to me when they, when they come up and they show up here, you, you, whenever I get done and get all my numbers together and it's over 30,000, that's what I want it to yeah, be. They showed up. They did. <laughs> they they, they did. were here. Yeah. yeah. Bill, we've talked about a lot of things. Is there any question I didn't ask you that you'd like to, to talk about? No, I'm sure that I'm, I'm sure that I have forgotten somebody in all this. For, well, I know that I forgot my wife. Um, she has been extremely, extremely supportive. What I, so you got to understand, you, you talked a little bit about I own two other companies and there's no telling. I've probably come to her with 20 different companies that I wanted to start or mm-hmm. do something with. And she's just like, you're crazy to want to do all this. <laughs> and whenever I came to her about AQS, she was like, look, you're crazy about all this other stuff, but that's one you've got to do. Like sure. you have no choice. And so she's been very supportive. Again, I'm, I'm gone weeks and, and, um, she's raising Brooks and she's very supportive and it's, Hey, how can I help? And all that. My sisters are the same way. Um, obviously we've talked about family and then, you know, our employees and all that. I just truthfully, I hope I haven't forgotten anybody, but I just want all my team and everybody that's around me this week to know how much I am thankful for what they have done to help me this week. Cause it's like you said, I only have a staff now on AQS only of about Mm -hmm. 23 and see, they had probably 45 or so when Meredith and them ran it. And so, you know, I literally pulled from everywhere. My other rainbow company, I pulled some people that have been in my life for a really, really long time. My old guidance counselor is working for me this week. (laughs) Week. I have family friends that are here. Uh I just, you know, I cannot thank them enough for taking the time to say, hey, guys, I need some help. And they were like, what do you need? And and they've been here for me all week. And that's it's really kind of crazy to say because a lot of people don't have that support system. Mm -hmm. But when you can go to 50 people or so that I've got on staff this week, you know, and you say, hey, I need help and they show up. And they're here and I don't have to worry about some things because I know they're running it. I just, I want all them to understand how truly grateful I am for that help. Well, they believe in you and the future of Quilt Week. Yeah. And it seems like it's it's back in a big way. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm really excited about it. And I, I'm excited about the, you know, we talk about Paducah, but the Grand Rapids Quilt Show is a great quilt show. I mm-hmm. love that quilt show. I love that town. I'm um, looking forward to it. And then, you know, we get through Des Moines and then I'll be back looking for 23. So it doesn't ever stop everybody. It's funny. You asked me, you know, are you going to get to slow down next week? And there is no slowing (laughs) down. It's it's Uh full speed ahead. Cause if you, if you take a second, you know, you, you can't get that time back and there's always ways that we can improve and get better on things. So. If our listeners want to reach out to you, what's the best way for them to contact you? Probably email my okay. phone. Well, we've been sitting here. It's probably buzzed 30 times. So it, it gets crazy. But email, my email is bill.schrader, S-C-H-R-O-E-D-E-R at AmericanQuilter.com. I promise you, I will get back to you. Sometimes it's two or three days just because it's crazy and mm-hmm. hopefully these next couple of weeks. But I love hearing from the quilters, the quilting community, you know, ways we can be better. Um, just thanks. You know, you want to reach out and say, Hey, thank you for putting on the quilt show. We don't see very many of those. It's normally the complaint. Of course. So, so, you know, every now and then I'll get a letter from, from somebody and say, Hey, I was at the quilt show and I loved it. And that's what keeps me moving forward is, Hey, we're doing a good job. And obviously we can always do better, but you know, those, those good ones are the ones that I'm like, okay, we're doing some things right at least. So a lot of things. Yeah, I appreciate it. This has been great, Bill. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. 
Well, there you have it. Another story about someone for whom sewing and quilting is so much more than a hobby. It's a way of life, a connection to something much bigger. If you know someone you think has an outstanding story, a story that should be shared on this podcast, please drop me a note to info at soandsopodcast.com or just complete the form on our website. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast on your favorite platform and visit our website, soandsopodcast.com, for more information about today's and all of our guests. That's S-E-W-A-N-D-S-O podcast.com. And finally, I want to thank Bernina for making this program possible. I'm Meg Goodman, and I look forward to you joining us next time on So-and-So.